Everyone obsesses over the fat you can pinch, but the dangerous fat is the kind wrapped around your organs. The good news, after 36 hours without food, your body flips a switch and starts melting visceral fat first. Not starvation, a reset. In this video, you'll see why short fasts trigger deep fat burn, what happens inside your cells when the cleanup begins, and how to do it safely without losing your mind halfway. Because this isn't about starving yourself, it's about discovering your body's built-in reset switch and what really happens when it flips. Belly fat is loud. It jiggles, it complains in mirrors. Visceral fat is quiet. It hides under your abs, wrapped around your liver, pancreas, and intestines, where it can mess with hormones, raise inflammation, and nudge you toward insulin resistance. Here's the twist most people miss. Visceral fat is more metabolically active when your insulin drops and glycogen drains, your body pulls fuel from the places that release it fastest, the deep stuff. Think of your torso like a crowded subway. Subcutaneous fat, the kind you can pinch, hangs back with headphones on. Visceral fat waits by the doors, like the kid who sprints out the moment the bell rings. That's why short, extended fasts feel different. You're not just losing weight, you're clearing the control room. Lower visceral fat means smoother insulin signals, a calmer liver, and less internal chaos. No, it's not overnight magic, but give your body 36 hours without food and it finally has permission to clean out the most toxic storage first. So what flips that signal at hour 36? And how do you get there without feeling miserable? Your body stores energy in layers. First up, glycogen the sugar stash in your liver and muscles. It's like the snack bar in your house. Quick bites, easy to grab. But once it's empty, your body has to walk downstairs into the storage room and open the big boxes marked fat. After about 24 hours of fasting, that snack bar runs dry. And that's when your metabolism does something wild. It flips the switch. Insulin drops. Fat burning hormones rise. Your body goes from sugar mode to survival mode. Now, the goal isn't just to burn fat, it's to find the right kind. Subcutaneous fat burns slow. It's like a big log on a campfire. Visceral fat, that's dry wood. It catches fire fast. Inside your cells, the machinery starts to change too. Mitochondria ramp up. Enzymes that break down fat activate. And just as energy production stabilizes, something bigger begins. It's called autophagy, your body's way of cleaning out damaged parts and recycling them for fuel. Most people think fasting only burns calories, but past that 30 hour mark, you're not just burning fat, you're upgrading your cells. So if you've ever felt that strange burst of focus around day two of a fast, that's your cells rebooting from the inside. But autophagy isn't just cleanup. It's a reset protocol your body only unlocks under the right conditions. And that's where the real transformation starts. Once your body flips into fat mode, something deeper turns on. Autophagy, your built-in cleanup system. Think of it as a 24-7 recycling crew that's usually stuck in traffic. When food is constant, insulin and mTOR stay high and cleanup gets pushed to the bottom of the to-do list. But around that 30 to 36 hour window, insulin drops, AMPK rises, mTOR quiets down, and the doors to the recycling center finally open. mTOR is the signal that tells your body to build and grow, great when you're eating. AMPK does the opposite. It tells your body to repair and recycle when food is low. What does that actually mean inside you? Old damaged cell parts, broken proteins, leaky mitochondria, junk that slows you down, get tagged, packed, and recycled for energy or repair. This isn't starving, it's smart maintenance. Your body delays when food is always coming in. And here's the part most people miss. Autophagy doesn't just make cells cleaner, it makes your metabolism work smoother. When visceral fat shrinks and inflammation calms, your liver gets breathing room. Insulin signals are easier to read. Mitochondria run steadier. That's why on day two, many people feel sharper and calmer, like their body finally turned down the static. Here's where most people misunderstand what's really happening. Autophagy isn't a magic detox button. Your liver and kidneys already handle detox. Autophagy is cellular housekeeping that helps everything else work better. And no, you don't need to fast for a week to trigger it. For many people, a short extended fast, about 36 hours, is enough to start the shift. 
Everyone's body works a little differently. Some feel it sooner, others a bit later. There's also a special version called mitophagy, targeting worn out mitochondria. Think of it like swapping dead batteries for fresh ones. Over time, better mitochondrial quality can mean steadier energy, better fat burning, and fewer afternoon crashes. Zooming out, this is why the 36-hour reset can feel different from everyday calorie cutting. You're not only burning fuel, you're retraining the system that decides which fuel to burn and how cleanly it runs. Bottom line, when you give your body a quiet window, it doesn't fall apart. It repairs, it recycles, and it starts by melting the fat that causes the most chaos on the inside. Here's how to unlock that 36 hour reset without feeling miserable and without doing anything dangerous or extreme. Step one, the lead in. Start your fast after dinner, say 7 p.m., so you sleep through the first half. That simple trick turns 36 hours into one night and one day. Before you begin, have a balanced meal. Protein, healthy fats, and low carbs. That steadies your blood sugar and keeps cravings in check once the clock starts. Step two, the fast window. For the next day and night, stick to water, black coffee, or tea. Add electrolytes if you're doing physical work. Salt, magnesium, potassium, the basics that keep your nerves and muscles firing. And remember, hunger comes in waves. When one hits, it usually fades after 15 to 20 minutes. Walk, stretch, or distract yourself. It passes faster than you think. The goal isn't punishment, it's patience. Step three, the refeed. When you break the fast, usually the following morning, go gentle. Start with protein and something light on the gut. Eggs, yogurt, broth, fish. Avoid sugar bombs or ultra processed foods. After a fast, your insulin sensitivity is higher. A big sugar spike here can undo the benefits you just earned. Follow those three steps and you've done it. Your first full 36 hour reset. No crash diets, no extreme cleanses, just letting your body do what it's been wired to do for thousands of years. Burn deep fat, recycle what's broken, and come back sharper. That's the power of a 36 hour reset and it's just the beginning. 36 hours isn't starving, it's a reset. You emptied the quick snacks, switched to deep fuel, and let your cells clean house. Less noise, smoother signals, real energy, not just caffeine. Do it once and you'll feel it. Do it once in a while and your body remembers how to burn the right fat first. But this is only the beginning. What if you went beyond 36 hours? and let your body keep transforming for three full days. That's when things get intense. Energy shifts, hormones rebalance, and a few small mistakes can ruin everything you've built. If you're curious what really happens during a 72 hour fast, check out the next video. It breaks down what's going on hour by hour and the common mistakes to avoid if you ever try it yourself. Or if you want another deep dive right now, watch this other video. It's a perfect next step. And if this video helped you understand fasting a little better, hit like, drop a comment, and subscribe for more science-based fasting stories like this one. See you there.